Hi, my name is Dr. Margaret Tung, and I'm the horn instructor at Olivet Nazarene University. I'm so excited to hear that you're interested in music, and especially the horn. I think the horn is such a great instrument because it's so versatile. You can play in a symphony orchestra, a band, a marching band, or even jazz. We blend really well with woodwind instruments and brass instruments. I chose to play the horn for three reasons. First of all, because I love the sound of the instrument. Second of all, for its visual beauty. You oftentimes see a lot of holiday ornaments that look like the horn. And third, because it's a really fulfilling instrument and it makes me really happy to play. I get to play for a living. So, let's get started. So, let's get started. The first step is to take the horn out of its case. So I like to find a really solid, secure place to open it. So I usually use the floor. And you can see my horn here. What you do is you turn the horn onto its side. And I would look for the label and make sure that's facing up. In this case, the bell is on the left-hand side, but for some cases, the bell will be on the right-hand side. So just look for the label. Next, we want to unclasp these latches like this. and open the case. So this is the horn. You'll know that you've opened it up correctly if you see the valves on top. So now I'd like to pick up the horn out of its case. Um, you have to be a little bit careful because the slides here come out. So I like to think about picking up the outermost body of the horn, like this. Now that we have the horn out, we can put the mouthpiece in. This is the mouthpiece here. It's usually found at the top of the case and we put it into the lead pipe here. And that's how you assemble the horn. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the different kinds of horns. So for a second, let's just talk about apples, how there's Macintosh apples, there's red apples, there's Granny Smith apples, and even though they're all different, they're all still apples. So just like the horn, there are different kinds of horns. Looking at my horn, you can see probably the biggest difference is that I have dimes on my valves. And they're on my horn because without them, sometimes my fingers slip. And so it kind of makes it more grippy for my fingers. Also, people will put dimes on their horns to extend the valves in case that your fingers are shorter or you feel like the valves need to be longer. So it kind of customizes the horn for you. So going over to this horn, picking it up, you'll see that this horn has no dimes on it and a fixed bell. All right, so another difference is, if you look on this side, one of the slides is facing up and one of the slides is facing down. And on my horn, both of them are facing up. Another difference is sometimes horns can be yellow and some of them will look silver. Um, both really great horns, but they'll just look different and have a little bit different sound. Okay, so looking at these slides, I want to talk about the difference between an F horn and a double horn. So an F horn has only one set of tubing on the horn, and it would just have this top layer of tubing, which is the F side. If you look here, you can see that there's two layers of tubing. And so for the double horn, there's the F side, and this is called the B-flat side. Now, for the single horn as well, there will only be one slide here. Now, for the double horn, what makes a big difference is the two, slide, the two sets of slides and the trigger, which I press here. When I press the trigger, I'm able to use the slides underneath the F side. Now, if you only have a single horn, you'll probably only have a thumb ring here, and it doesn't move. The horn started off as a single horn, but to help aid in the high register, they added the B-flat side, and that's why we have a double horn today. Having really great posture when playing the horn is really important, especially because we have to breathe. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to find an armless chair, just like the one I'm sitting in. And then sit with your back a little bit away from the from the back of the chair and with your feet flat on the floor. And so this is how I have good posture. Now we're going to talk about breathing. 
So for this section, it's really important to keep really good posture, especially so that your body can stay relaxed and so that your body can fill up with air naturally. And playing the horn air is especially important because it's our fuel. Just like if you drive a car, you need gasoline to make the car go. For the horn, we use air, except in this case, it's free. So take in as much as you can. Now, for a breath, I like to think about yawning in, just so that you stay really relaxed. And it sounds a little bit like this. You kind of want to stay away from the high pitch breaths, which can kind of sound like this. Because that can create some tension. So just stay relaxed, have your good posture, and take in a breath and let your, na your body naturally fill. And that's how you take a breath. Now we're going to talk about holding the horn. I want you to keep in mind to always bring the horn to you and not to bring your body to the horn. That way you can maintain your really great posture. So first, I want you to put the horn up on your right leg, like this. Making sure that the bell faces out so that you're not playing into your body. Because if it's facing out, you'll get the best sound. Secondly, you want to put your left hand on the valves. You want to put your index finger, your middle finger, and your ring finger on these valves. And your thumb on what's on my horn is called a trigger. On your horn, it may just be a ring. And I want you to put your pinky on the pinky ring here. Now the next part is right hand position. Have you ever wondered, why is that horn player putting the right hand in the bell? What does it do? Um, so what I recommend is holding out your hand like this and creating a ledge between your thumb and your index finger and creating a little cup here. Next, if you look at your horn, there's a brace here. And I like to go an inch, an inch and a half to the right of it, and that's where I put my hand inside the bell. And you want to make sure that it stays on the right hand side of the bell and that you keep the hand open. And always keeping in mind that the right hand deflects the sound, it doesn't muffle the sound. And so now, with all three things in position, this is how we hold the horn. So now on to the really exciting part of making a sound. So I'm going to take my mouthpiece out and I'm going to set my horn on the floor for the moment. Basically, all sound has to vibrate. So just as I'm speaking right now, my vocal cords have to vibrate. And just as I, you know, if I strum a guitar, the strings have to vibrate. For playing the horn and for all brass instruments, our lips have to vibrate. And we call this vibration a buzz. And it sounds like this. Pretty funny, I know. And we create that buzz by putting our lips together. And I like to say the syllable M, so M, and then firming the corners like this. And then you take a big breath and you blow. Now I would like to form an embouchure. An embouchure is the position of the mouth to create a buzz. So I'm going to take my mouthpiece and what you want to do is put two-thirds of your top lip inside the mouthpiece and one-third of your lower lip inside the mouthpiece. And it looks like this. And it sounds like this. Now the purpose of the mouthpiece is to isolate lip. That's all that it does. So you always want to make sure that you isolate the best kind of lip. And that means isolating relaxed lips. So always think about keeping the lip inside the mouthpiece relaxed and strengthening around the mouthpiece. When I take a breath, I'm always really careful to relax and just let the air come in naturally. Like that. You don't ever want to stretch the lips or tense them, which could look like this. And sound like that. So keep it relaxed inside, firm on the outside, and that's how you make an embouchure for the horn. So now we're going to talk about playing our first note. A really important part to the first note is what we call tonguing, or articulation. This is where the tongue is used to create a clear beginning to a note. For tonguing, the tongue should touch where the teeth and the upper gums meet. And just keep in mind that the tongue is used to release air. So once it contacts, get it out of the way. So if this is the teeth here and this is the tongue, I like to think about the first note starting and looking like this. 
do, as opposed to a lot of movement, which could look like this. Do, so just really simple. Do. Now I use the syllable do. Some people like to use to, and you can use whatever is comfortable for you. Now, let me demonstrate this tonguing articulation for you. And that's how you play your first note. 